welcome to Life Questions, everyone. I am your host, Bill Harris. If you are doubtful and perplexed about life, or maybe everything is going your way, nonetheless, I'd advise you to stop and watch today's program because life is so uncertain. With all of its ups and downs and twists and turns, sometimes without warning, we need perspective on how to get a hold of this thing called life. And today we are joined by ministers of the gospel who are arming themselves with answers to your questions about life. I'd like you to meet them. First up on our panel is Pastor Janet Wind of Cornerstone Church here in Lima, followed by Pastor Michael Lyons of In Faith Ministries in Lima. Then there's Pastor Tim Benjamin of Wayne Street United Methodist Church in St. Mary's, Ohio. And rounding up our panel is Pastor Michael Wyckoff of Joy Harvest Fellowship in Lima. Lady, gentlemen, we're happy to have you all with us. Let, let's start with um, a couple of letters that we got in from viewers, and we're still on this, this, this COVID thing that's been going on for a year, a little over a year now. This one letter says, um, if I could talk to God right now, I would ask him to explain why he is allowing us to go through this COVID. We thought it would be over last summer. Now I see no end to it. So that's directed toward God. Another question came in. Where is God? I have been a believer my entire life. They've got seniority. Yes. <laughs> but after a year of struggling through COVID and work-related issues, I've been asking God to show up and I am not, and I am seeing nothing. I am seeing nothing. I am starting to question if God really is who I have always believed him to be. Mm -hmm. uh, two frustrated Christians because COVID has lingered so long. How do you help them, gentlemen? Yeah, we don't, Lady, uh, how do you help them? <laughs> yeah, we don't take anything away from them because uh, the frust those frustrations expressed there, we all in the, in the media room before this expressed the same frustration. Yeah, so, yeah. so don't think that this is isolated. But I, I think at the same time, uh, we need to remember that there were problems prior to COVID and there have been problems since COVID. In uh, this world. In this world, have. exactly. And, and all kind of, of issues and trials and tribulations and things. And, and, uh, you know, we all wish that, that this thing would end faster. I mean, it's already going on, like you said, almost a year longer than anybody wanted. Yeah. Uh, so that can cause us to question God. At the same time, we can't allow our frustration with this one particular issue to steal the joy from everything else that's going on. You know, there, there are still good things that are happening. Now, again, maybe not the things that we want to have happen, <laughs> but I think the biggest thing we could do is make sure you're not developing tunnel vision to where I can only see this just major source of frustration mm -hmm. and I'm missing all the other things that are going on. You know, mm -hmm. I, I want this to be over and so does everyone else. No one disagrees with that, but, but we can't allow that to steal the joy from the rest of the world from us. Yeah. 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 Now, Pastor, the way, I, when you say what you say, you know, I, I think we always have to be careful anytime we start asking God why. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> we, we've already jumped off the deep end when we start that, I believe, but but I, I will say this on that topic, and I have made a note, and, and what I find more revealing on, on this particular topic is, is when we tend to ask why, you know, we're much like children. Uh, only only uh, when things don't seem to be in line with our personal opinion or desires does the question why come up. God's you know, gotten we, off your program. Yeah, he's gotten off our program, and we, we don't do why, why, why was my grandbaby born healthy? We don't get a why for that. When no. God doesn't get a why for that. When God doesn't get a why for, uh, uh, you know, what, why did you keep me from the car accident? You know, only, only the whys that don't line up with our, but why do I have to clean my room? You know, <laughs> when, when things don't line up with our personal desires, mm -hmm. then we want to bring in questioning God. But we never tend to have a question for God as why he's blessed us so or why so many lived through the virus. Why, why, why haven't, you know, this country ever had to deal with some of these scenarios that so many other countries have dealt with before? Mm -hmm. So I believe that when we begin to ask God why, you know, why is it that we never bring the why um, for the blessings and for all the favor mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. He's the same God. So I just think we have to be careful when we get to go into the why. Absolutely. And, and, you know, God's called us to trust him. Do we believe that God is who he says he is <laughs> exactly. or do we not? And um, if you look at each person in the Bible, whether it was Moses or David or Joseph or anybody in the Bible, um, they went through difficult times. God never said we weren't going to go through hard things. I think sometimes it's a fallacy as Christians that we believe that if if we accept him, that our life is going to, to be perfect. We're not going to go through things. But no, God said, I'm going to take you through. I'll take you over. I'll take yeah. you under. I'll mm -hmm. take you whatever. But God God is the one who, who takes us through. But it's not on our time frame. It's not in our way. It's not the way we want it to be. And, um, and so he, this is an opportunity to trust him and to get to know him, to believe that he is who he says he is because he is and COVID hasn't changed that. Yeah. But his plans are good and they're not Yes, here, they are. You know, and, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I just think that, you know, there's, there's a, but we understand the frustration sure. and the disappointment in the question. Sure. You know, I just think that much like our children, when they begin to ask, well, why do I have to make my bed? Yeah. Why do I have to clean my room? There's a lot of things that they don't know that we know. Sure. And we don't always take the time to explain to them the wisdom of why we're having them do or go through what they got to go through mm. because we're setting them up for something other than what they know. And, uh, you know, I could like to suggest that a lot of times that we're going through some of the things that we're going through, that we have to go ahead and trust God in that, knowing that he's allowing yeah. us to go through it because he's setting us up for something else that yes, we don't know. For mm -hmm. sure. The only thing I can add is that, um, you know, answer, why, God, why? Why is there death? Why is there sin? Why is there war? Why is there poverty? Why is there disease? I mean, the answer to, whatever the answer to that question is, is the same answer to this person's question. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there was a fall. You know, go back to Genesis. You know, man, there was no disease. Everything was wonderful, and man rebelled and handed the lease over to Satan. That's right. Intentionally. Mm -hmm. So now he's, you know, he, he is not, uh, he, he's called the God of this world, you know. Savior. Now, he's mm -hmm. not our God, and it doesn't mean that he has to be, have control over everything in our lives. He'll try to kill us. He'll try to give us COVID. Mm -hmm. But Jesus died on the cross. He gave us the, the answer on the cross, and he took our sicknesses. He took our sin. Mm -hmm. So there is an answer. It's not like, God, what are you doing? It's basically God saying back, hey, I've already done with the finished work on the cross, every problem that you have, I have an answer for. Through the finished work of Jesus Christ on the mm -hmm. cross, from your spiritual life, your physical, your emotional. Mm -hmm. And, you know, where is God? Well, you know, we want God to, sh or what did that person say? I want God to show up. Yeah, I want God you, to show the, up. The, the <laughs> thing to do is let's show up to God. Instead of saying, well, all right, God, I'm waiting for you. You know, go to him, show up to him. Good. And, you know, I think a person that makes God uh, one thing, you know, and, and Psalm 24, 27 just says, One thing I've asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to seek him. In other words, the one thing, and if God's the one thing in your life, you know, I, I find that whenever I'm seeking the one thing in my life, I have a little need for encouragement. I heard a pastor say that once. That's not my line. I wish it was. <laughs> but you know, a person that is seeking God with all their heart has little need of encouragement. Mm -hmm. And that would be my advice. Seek him. He does have the answer. Don't wait for him. He's waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Very, good. Very good. Very good. You know, there is a related question about COVID again from another viewer. That's from dealing with fear. This person is admitting that they're struggling with fear. Mm -hmm. I know we're not supposed to fear. But everything that has happened this year, meaning last year, really, uh, has left me so fearful. Can you offer Bible verses to help me fight these fears? Well, there's a what? few here. <laughs> and I'm sure the person probably knows them, I, I would think. So we just, we're, we're just reminding them, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Yeah. Um, you weren't born with that when you were born again. And if not, you need to be born again because he puts into you, a, you know, the ability to believe. Actually, fear is a faith. It is. It's I, a faith. I've heard it's that a perverted talk. faith yes, that something bad is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And my suggestion is to counteract fears. Go to the word of God that has promises 
for strength. And, and one of the places you can find help is, um, you know, there's no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. What's going to happen to me? What's the effect on me? Uh, what am I going to do? I, me, me. In other words, the enemy wants us to focus on ourselves. And what the Bible says to do here in James 4, 7, is to submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You know, use the name of Jesus and say, devil, Satan, in the name of Jesus, stop it in the name of Jesus. Fear, I rebuke you, because it is a spirit. It's a spirit mm -hmm, of fear. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual thing. And, and uh, so there's a couple of, there's, there's more, but those were a few oh, scriptures. Funny. Yeah, and, and there's a difference between fear and caution. Yeah. You know, right. you know just because I'm afraid to uh, uh, jump out of an airplane doesn't make it a good idea. <laughs> right. You know, it's, it's, it's just caution to not do that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, right now we are living in a time when, when we are being encouraged to be cautious. Now we can debate how important that is and what that means. Right. But just because I'm cautious doesn't mean I'm fearful. Right. And Isaiah 26.3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Right. So as we keep our mind on him, as we meditate on him, as we meditate on the word, whatever we think on, whatever we meditate on becomes magnified. Mm -hmm. So if we fill ourselves with news and with fearful things, mm -hmm. that's what becomes magnified to us. Focus. If we fill ourselves with the word and with God and with who he is and what he has done, then he becomes magnified. He becomes the thing that is glorified in our lives. That's Mike just said focus, and I always teach what you focus on, you build faith in. Yes. Mm -hmm. What you focus on, yes. you build faith in. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have faith that God will protect you, focus on God. Right. If you want to have faith that God will keep you from hurt, harm, or danger, focus on God. Uh, so what you focus on, you build faith in. And if you focus on uh, the messages that are coming, the narratives of everything that comes with that sickness and everything that comes with it, you will build faith in that. Mm -hmm. And that faith will lead you to a greater place of increase in fear. I, I think it all ties into the same focus. And my, one of my favorite chapters uh, for people, and you gave a few scriptures, but I'm just going to just send you all to Psalms 91. Uh, just, just go to Psalms 91 and just rest in that. Uh, of course, in order to dwell in that secret place, uh, that's where you're going to have to focus at. You're going to have to, uh, in, in order to dwell in it, you're going to have to focus on them. And so I believe that would help anyone who's actually struggling with a strong uh, stronghold of fear. Uh, if you start abiding, focusing and dwelling, meditating on the things of God, you'll find yourself being more freed up. Uh, from fear, and you'll build your faith in his promises and his peace. Amen. Very good. Very well put. Listen, I think this is a good place for a break. <laughs> Let's pause for a moment and take a break, and we'll come back and we'll deal with more about uh, how you can overcome in this life and the fact that the scriptures have the answer for whatever you're going through. Stay with us. Amen. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. Okay, just a little bit more I'd like to deal with uh, fear because it seems to me that the enemy has that weapon or that tool in his arsenal to pull out to get you to behave in certain ways that you wouldn't normally behave. Am I correct? Yeah, f f fear is kind of, kind of like a, a fuel to whatever emotion you're feeling. You know, I don't know if fear by itself is something that we experience, mm -hmm. but we normally mix it with something mm -hmm. like I'm confused. I don't know what this is. So, so the unknown, I'm fearful. And now all of a sudden you're in a full blown panic attack or you got fear about, uh, uh, I have questions about a, a person I'm in a relationship with, or I have uh, some kind of doubt about something, or I don't know what to do, or, or I'm, I'm frustrated with this thing, or I'm upset about that. And you add fear to that because of the unknown, or you add fear because I don't understand, or you have fear because I wish things were different, or you have fear because I'm worried about what might happen. Mm -hmm. And, and you mix those together and then it just, it can run your whole life. It's, it's corrosive. Yeah. And I think that's the danger is uh, when we don't know what to do, then we got, we've got this one emotion, we mix it with fear, and we, got, we don't know what to do with it. It comes out as anger. 
But you know, the Bible is replete with scriptures that tell us, fear not, fear not, fear not. I once did a thing on, on, on my Bible program in my computer and just look up the words fear not and boom, there they were. The Bible is trying to comfort us not to fear. It's because fear does, there's no positive reaction when you're afraid. There's no way to have a positive response when you're afraid. No rational response. And there's no rational response. Mm -hmm. So why do we do it? Well, you know, I think if you understand the word, you know, obviously he says fear has torment, right? And, and, and what, what casts out, you know, perfect love casts out. So I, I think that until we perfect, and that word perfect simply speaks to complete, until we completely love the Lord, and, and, and that completeness comes with, he says, if you love me, now you're going to keep my commandments. You're going you're gonna to trust my word for your life. Mm -hmm. And until we allow our life to be completed by actually trusting his word, mm -hmm. we'll constantly be tormented by what we don't know. You, you talked about the unknown. The unknown just opens the door for fear. And, and so if I don't have to know it, I don't have to know the cure. I don't have to know how my bills are going to be paid. I don't have to know how my kids are going to be taken care of. I don't have to know it if I have complete trust in his word that says that he will provide it, that he will protect it. So when I allow myself to be obedient to that word, I can rest in the faith and the peace that comes with this perfect love that has been given me in Christ. And so I can complete and not have to be torn. I can complete this love by allowing myself to be obedient to the word that he gave me and just trusting and just trusting. It's the, it's the same with a dog barking at you. You know, a dog barking at you, you have one thought in your mind when the dog's barking. You have another thought in your mind when the owner steps out on the porch with the leash. Yeah. When, when the owner steps out, all of a sudden the same bark is going on. But now you have a different place of that unknown if that dog's going to bite me or not. Yeah. Because now you see the owner and you put your trust in that owner. Yeah. Yeah. God is saying, just put your trust in me. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to complete what I said I would do. And I think well, it's focusing on the end, too. So many times we get focused on every step of the journey. We don't always know every step of the journey, but we know the end result. We know the destination. We know what God has said is the end of the story. And if we can put our trust in him, it's like turning on the light switch. You have more faith to turn on the light switch that the lights are going to come on than the God of the universe who said, I'm the one who... I mean, that's, that's what we do. We step yeah. on our porches and we, we want to let that neighbor know he's not going to bite. Yeah. Going to bite. We, we, we want to... Don't, don't be afraid. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. just... He's not... We want them to know that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we want to bring them to a place of an easement, a place of peace. And God is saying, yes. fear not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That right. enemy is not going to bite. Right. But with some Christians, they, have, they give you the litany of complaints they have and what they're fearful of. And at the bottom of that list, they'll say, you know, in addition to all these other things, that same dog is barking at me that bit me years ago. That's, you know, that's, 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 that's the case mm -hmm. that's, because they haven't gotten rid of it. That's right. They haven't gotten rid that's of it. That's right. You know? Well, let me turn to uh, another related thing. Okay. Anger. Mm -hmm. We got a question in from a viewer about this. I have noticed that I am more angry now than I was before. I snap back at people more quickly. Everything surrounding the virus is taking its toll. I'm worried about my mental health and the mental health of others. Mm -hmm. It's leading to anger for some people. Yeah, and you know, I'll tell you, there's, I, you, I think you closed your comments about uh, fear and anger, I think, is, is a big output of fear. And really the answer is what we were talking about before the break, and that is our focus. You know, um, we get angry, you know, and, and with the election and, and the politics <laughs> and so forth. And I'm talking about Christians now, too. You know, mm -hmm. we get angry. Now, why do we get angry? It's because we're not focusing on the Word of God. We're focusing on Facebook, we're focusing on social media, we're focusing on the rants, we're reading and writing rants mm -hmm. on, on that. And I have to admit, sometimes when I see things, I get angry, you know? <laughs> and uh, you know what? No, you know, we need to get 
our nose out of Facebook and our face in the book. All right. <laughs> yeah, well said. I mean, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't, I don't obsess it. You know, we obsess over the news. We're obsessing over uh, politics. And, and we talked about standing up for right and you know, uh, expressing our worldviews and representing Christ. We want to represent him well. And I, it gets back to the same answer. You know, we're, we are listening to the wrong voices. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about the seed. You know, the seed of our faith is the Word of God, all right? And the Word grows and the kingdom grows with the Word, right? And that's what the parable of the sower is about. Well, this is where you plant the plant and then the thorns grow up with the plant and it chokes the plant. And our faith is getting choked. Our walk with God, our love, our faith, our patience, all the fruit of the Spirit are getting choked because our focus is on all the other voices. We're listening to all the other voices. We can't even hear God. Yeah, we reach into the garden and we instinctively grab the thorn and we can't understand why we get, get <laughs> cut. You right, know? and it's killing the plant. It's yeah. killing the Word of God in us and it's hurting our walk. You know, when you look at the two, the two subjects we just finished discussing, uh, first the fear and then the anger, I wonder if people are reacting in fear and anger because to some, to some, they have no control. And that makes them either fearful, fearful, full, fearful, or angry. And by doing that, they give, they give up what little control they have left. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because uh, you know we talked about the the, the loss of ration, rational thought and the thought of, or the the hope of being able to make informed decisions when everything's a response. When you're afraid, everything's a response. Mm -hmm. so, and you may be responding mm -hmm. to something that's not even happening. Yeah. 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 That's why it's so important. And I know I don't want to, but it's so important that we operate in the true authority and the knowledge of who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, it, when you make a statement like they don't have any control, it, it's because they're still operating in the mind mm -hmm. that they have been shaped in as when they were before Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, once you give your life to Christ, you have to understand that you've been given all power and authority. Yes. And you've got to learn how to operate as, as an ambassador of, of that of the king who who's placed you in that and so you, you don't have to worry about doing it yourself when you realize that just like any ambassador I've got the government that sent me here who's going to back what I say mm -hmm. and back what I do as long as what I say and what I do is what the government has empowered me to say and do so I, I don't have to be afraid anymore I don't have to be angry I can operate in that and, and, and I think that that's the problem with a lot of our believers. This is not a gift that's available for all the world. This is not a position that's available for all the world. It's a position that's available for those who have chosen Jesus as the Lord and Savior. They can rest now in that peace and in that authority and in that lack of fear. So I, I think that that's, that's a good place for us to be able to, to witness uh, the gift of God by letting them know you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be angry. You don't have to be upset. You don't have to be concerned. What, what you need to do is allow yourself to be committed to the name of Jesus, yeah. and, and he'll, he'll free you from that. And that always comes back to me to say to myself, okay, what am I thinking wrong? What, what am I, what am I, how am I not seeing Jesus mm. right? How am I not right. seeing God right? Because it always comes back to him. So, so that's telling me there's more I need to know. There's more I need to focus on. There's more I need to, my focus needs to be on him, on the word, on who he's telling me mm -hmm. that he is because he is who he says that he you, is. You, you, can't, you can't receive what God has for you until you get the proper perception yes. of how God sees you. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. you get that in the it, Word you, of God. You, you, yes, can't, you yes. can't receive to what God has for you until you get yes. the proper perception as to how God sees you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God sees us as His, mm -hmm. as His sons, anointed and appointed with yeah. all power yeah. and authority. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And until we see ourselves like He sees us, mm -hmm. we can't walk into what He's given us. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't that something to, to, to put on the eyeglasses, certain eyeglasses that enable you to see yourself as God sees you That's right. mm -hmm. rather than as you see yourself. Which to me means that, you know, in some cases, we're listening more to the, um, the carnal voices that are speaking to us. We're listening to the wrong voices exactly. that are saying all these negative things <laughs> right. rather than what you said, Pastor exactly. Wyckoff, listening to the voice of the Word of God, what God mm -hmm. is telling us. 
And, and, and God is telling us that we are his sons and we are his daughters. Mm -hmm. With all that, power. Yeah, yeah, with all, all power. Authority. All power. All, all power, power and authority. And we are forgiven. Yes. yes. You know? Yeah, and when we continue to saturate ourselves in negative messaging and, and, right. and some of this Facebook stuff you were talking about, right. and, and then we wonder why we're fearful when we're, we're turning our back on, on the message and, and turning it toward whatever that other stuff is, and it gets us distracted, and then we can't understand why we're upset. Yeah. Yeah. Real, real quick, see if you can help this one lady viewer here. Um, she says, uh, can you just offer some encouragement and hope? Of course, you've been doing that right long now. <laughs> but she says, uh, I'm a single mom with young kids who are doing online school. Uh, that's, in some cases, for some people, that's a tragedy yeah, right yeah, there I mean, to manage that situation. Yeah. I mean, uh, I am working from home. Oh, my goodness. She's working from home and she's mm -hmm. doing the homeschooling as well. And things are just really hard right now. And she ended at that. So what and, words of encouragement? You know, you, and she's right. She can't. Mm -hmm. On her own power, mm -hmm. on her own effort, on her own determination, she can't do it. She needs Jesus. She needs the Lord. You know, she needs surrender and that's it you know it's i give up lord i can't do it you need to help me and i get back to this whole thing is that, you know when you seek him you know the more you seek him the less encouragement you need you know yeah. you have little need for encouragement yeah you know we want to encourage him and it's always easy to say it and done i i can i kind of smile like this obviously i haven't had any kids in the house in a long time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't uh, uh, and, and, and at the end of the day, you know, I can't imagine uh, some of the true struggles that are going yeah. through these single yeah, moms yeah, and these parents sure. and, and having these kids around, you know, you know, you want to choke them just when you got them for a little while, right. you know, yeah. have, but, but I, I, I can't imagine that. But what I, what I come in agreement with is the fact that, you know, you're just going to have to find ways to truly go to God in prayer, Ask him to show you, you know, can we give you the advice? No, but I sure know he can. Yes. And, and if you spend a little bit more time, I, I would, if I could offer any counsel, spend some time, more time with him and, and, and let him minister to you before you go to try to minister and lead your kids. Spend more time with him. Allow him to, uh, you know, minister to you. And I believe that will strengthen you to help you go be able to minister and endure that day with your children. So, yeah, and, I, and I think I think if we wanted to find a, a biblical word for this, talking about being in a fire, uh, I mean the f most famous fire anyone was in was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The interesting thing is they went into the furnace, and they were in the furnace. But the only person who saw the fourth person in the fire was the king. We're never told if the other three guys saw that yeah. God was actually there the whole time. Mm. Very yeah. interesting yeah. point. Interesting. Wish yeah. we could expand on it more, but we're all yeah. out of time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of these nuggets, these wonderful nuggets from the Word of God to help us overcome. Take them to your bosom and live yes. by them. Well, it's been wonderful being with you today. We'll be back again next week at the same time. So until then, I'm Bill Harris. God bless you. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.